When the first browser was released, the only job of that browser was to display some HTML content in some sort of markup format on your client. Since then, since the 1990s, the things on web have evolved so rapidly, so fast in just the past two, three decades that now it would not be a wrong statement to say that a browser is mostly an operating system at this point. In this video, I want to spend some time with browsers in general and just tell you how much work they do under the hood so that you appreciate what kind of technology we have developed and then also take a look at what you can do about this as a developer in today's time. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So in the earlier times, what used to happen as a browser, as a piece of software, all it had to do was connect to a remote server using TCP and HTTP 1, 1 or 0 0.9 or whatever this is like old times, it gets that HTML, CSS, JS document and it tries to render that HTML and CSS a little bit. This is like 1990s something. Now over the time, what we did were a lot of optimizations on this HTTP protocol, number one. Number two, we introduce more protocols in general, for example, WebSockets, right? Number three, we introduced more functionalities on web pages with HTML5, for example, like video tags and audio tags and this and that, a lot of more stuff. And number four is, of course, we made more support for JavaScript and performance for JavaScript. And number five, of course, is like support for OASM now, which is like the hottest thing right now. So this addition of this actually makes it very close to be called as an operating system because at this point, if you take a look at applications which are available in the market right now, you would see that VS Code, an application as complex as VS Code is almost fully ported on the web. Microsoft just released a website called VS Code.dev, which basically is just like a VS Code implementation with the terminal and everything missing. Uh, but the rest of the editor, including a lot of plugin support is same. I mean, Microsoft is not the first company like Thea IDE was also like, I believe very close to VS Code on the browser. So that has happened. But now we are approaching a place where applications like Photoshop, for example, Photoshop can directly be compiled to Wasm and then be used inside browsers, right? Of course, there are a few APIs and a few things that are required, but Photoshop, an application as big and as complex as a decade long project, you know, it has been like for decades now, just bringing it directly to the browser with minimal rewrites is a huge, huge benefit. Now, once you have these applications on web, all we have to do is rerun this whole cycle again in terms of how we can optimize the transfer speed, which is we are doing with HTTP 2 and 3, how we can add support for more protocols, which is also happening eventually, like you, you would hear about gRPC and other binary ways of transferring data. We, we have like more features on HTML, CSS and JavaScript world. And we are also increasing the performance of WebAssembly and support for that. And JavaScript features and performance, for example, now Chrome also ships with something known as some, some new file APIs. I'm not exactly sure what they're doing, but this was like an important part to get Photoshop on the browser because Photoshop is like a heavy tool, right? So you would be loading a lot of heavy pictures or heavy assets in that tool as well. So it needed some sort of file API support for Chrome, which has landed in Chrome 96, I guess. I'll need to check on that. But yeah, I mean, this cycle is running. And the next time the cycle runs, you basically have a software which is so powerful that you probably just need enough hardware to run that browser alone, right? Because the rest of the things are just a link click away. And even going one step beyond that, if you are living, if you happen to live in a country or in a city or in a place where you have great internet connection as well, solutions like, I'm not sure if you have heard, there's a new player in town called Mighty, which is like a thin wrapper for running Chrome inside the inside the cloud. So what you do is, is you actually don't even run the browser anymore. You stream the browser from the cloud and this is where Chrome is running and the Chrome actually then interacts with the world, right? From server and then streams it, streams it like a video. I mean, 
it sounds bad but it would not be so bad if you have a good internet connection with good latency so it streams it down the line right so it is very much possible that in near future we might end up with just very thin clients which are just streaming supported which just tree gets connects to a server streams the browser and that's it so you're browsing the web from the web itself on the other side of spectrum we have things like m1 and m1 pro and m1 pro max which are new chips from apple new laptops and intel even intel has released a faster chip i think a couple of days ago so these things are making a single individual computer more powerful and this is basically fine as well because if this computer is fine you can just directly run a browser and directly load these heavy applications using wasm or anything which comes next in future on your system itself right so no matter if we end up with thin clients or if we end up with thick clients you know you would not be seeing the decline of web that is for sure because a lot of applications a lot of legacy applications now thanks to wasm support and the ability to run rust and c plus plus and c and all that good stuff inside browsers this is going to push the web even further and mind you like web is really really ahead of a lot of technologies even right now so what can you learn about all this information where photoshop is now coming on the web ffmpeg is already available on web as a you know as a wasm binary so it runs locally you have support for so many new things so many new features you know 3d performance and 3d games and 3d applications is also coming so what is the gist of all this discussion the gist of this discussion is that if you're a developer who has no idea about which field you want to try i mean you know the standard ones mobile app development machine learning web development dsa competitive whatever i believe in my experience because i have seen the web inside out and i'm still in the web ecosystem web has still the most potential out of all these fields right i mean sure mobile development and ml and you know might might seem a little bit more interesting ml is basically you know if you are interested you would go anyway but if you are confused anyway then you should choose web at least right now because this has a huge potential in terms of what is coming in modern browsers what the standards are being set uh, what sort of apis it's now available plus the whole tooling is getting better it's getting faster companies like Vercel are pushing it to the edge literally i mean the development of web development as well as developers on the edge so i did a quick video on next year's 12 as well if you want to check that out it has a lot of new features but yeah i mean it's a great time to be a web developer so if you are trying to pick between one front end back end full stack mobile application ml computer programmer i think you can start your journey with a web development career and you know be learning a lot of you would be learning a lot of new things i would love to know your opinion on what do you think on the statement that browser is the new operating system now do you think you will see yourself using browser for pretty much everything five years down the line or do you feel like there would be a rise of native apps maybe in some time and it's just a matter of time that browsers the hype which has been created that gets settled again let me know in the comments below what you think that is all for this video i'm gonna see you in the next one really soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of code dumps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching